Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Sergio Andreozzi, uh, the co-chair of this session together with Irena Vipouts from the Shock Project. I work for the IOSCA project and uh, uh, together with Irena, we will chair the session on the topic of um, challenges in sustainability of fair research data and services for the social science humanities research community and beyond. And the, the, the structure of the session is the following. We will have uh, three short presentations from the three from representatives of the three projects that um, co-organize this event. And then we will have a panel discussion where uh, we can uh, take questions from the audience, but also we will hear from additional experts that we invited into the session. And um, in terms of uh, housekeeping rules, uh, after each presentation, if you have any burning questions, uh, we can uh, take one, maximum two. Otherwise, we will uh, move the discussions during the panel, where there will be more opportunities and we will have more time. And um, also for the questions, you are welcome to write the, your questions in the chat and so that we can monitor it and then we can pick them up for uh, both into the panel of the speakers. So the first speaker uh, of the session um, is Tiziana Ferrari, uh, who is the director of the EGI Foundation. Uh, the EGI Foundation is the coordinating body of the EGI Federation that is an international infrastructure for data intensive computing for research and innovation. She has experienced research governance, business models of federated infrastructures and support to international research collaborations. And especially from 2018, she is the coordinator of the EOSCAB project. And uh, Tiziana will give a presentation on uh, a selected key exploit results from the EOSCAB project that are relevant to uh, the session and those what are the current challenges and sustainability strategies. Tisana, you're welcome to speak. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, <clears throat> looking at uh, sharing uh, my screen. OK, now I see my presentation. And I'm going in. Uh, show mode. I hope you can see my slides. Uh, first of all, welcome uh, to this um, last day of the event. And um, with this short presentation, I'd like to um, give a few examples of how the USCAB project, which is now reaching the last month, um, is dealing with the problem of the sustainability and governance of some of the key exploitable results. The project um, is a, a 30 million project that brings together major e infrastructures delivering horizontal services together with major research infrastructures. Some of these are already represented in this panel, like Clarin, that delivers thematic capabilities and data on top of horizontal services from e infrastructures. And um, together, we have been um, developing a number of results that we hope will be building blocks of the implementation of the European Open Science Cloud. I will present this in a, in a short slide. And uh, following to this, we will provide uh, examples of other key exploitable results that um, would be components of the EOSC core and the EOSC exchange. For those who are familiar with the terminology of EOSC, meaning uh, for core, the federating services that enable the federation of data, um, research outputs and services, and the exchange which deliver adding value services. So we start uh, presenting um, very briefly what are the key exploitable results of the project. We have uh, nine of these uh, uh, across the whole um, work plan. These are illustrated uh, in this diagram in the gray boxes. And all these key exploitable results have been mapped against the key stakeholders of the European Open Science Cloud. So I will start with the key stakeholders that we are addressing. 
We are addressing, of course, the research communities, but also the long tail of science to empower their research with advanced capabilities and data. We are addressing operators of the future USC core, those that will deliver the federating elements, the glue of the European Open Science Cloud. The service providers who need to have a model and the support of tools and processes to integrate their capabilities into EOSC and also enterprise, meaning the private sector that has an advantage in engaging with EOSC for their research activities and the product development in the pre-market phase. And of course, um, also um, a number of key exploitable results which address these different uh, stakeholders and I like to first of all emphasize one of the cares which I will explain in a moment the portal and the marketplace. The service management system as a set of processes to deliver the federating core and the thematic services, uh, which are the services in the EOSC service portfolio which uh, bring the final value for the end users. So I will uh, start illustrating uh, and introducing the USC portal and marketplace and then explaining how we have been addressing uh, its sustainability and governance in this final phase of the project. First of all, what is the, the portal? The portal is an online platform that is a collaborative effort of different projects, for example, USC Hub, but also Open Air Advance and USC Announce, which is a dedicated project so that will continue the USC portal development after the end of our project. The portal has been conceived to be a registry of uh, capabilities which build the exchange and the portfolio. These are the services which are user facing, but also capabilities for uh, providers to enroll, to register their services, the data and other assets that build the uh, capabilities that all together uh, make the EOSC and a marketplace, which is a specific component of the portal that gives the opportunity to users to access um, these assets, either by placing orders directly in the marketplace or by um, walking through different aggregators, for example, from the marketplace to other different community portals so that these um, uh, specific data and services can be accessed through uh, community or thematic uh, existing platforms external to the portal. In essence, the portal is one of the possible channels that deliver uh, data and services to the demand side of EOSC, but also provide an aggregation point for the supplies side. Uh, and uh, the portal aims at connecting these two major uh, groups uh, of EOSC stakeholders. So now we are reaching the end of the project and, of course, um, we need to find a way to uh, continue these developments and the operations. In this uh, diagram, uh, we show how the portal is expected to interact as an ecosystem of access points. Um, so the portal is, uh, is a central aggregation of providers and an access point to researchers, as I explained. But at the same time, researchers can, from the marketplace, access other regional registries or thematic um, uh, registries, which uh, provide additional capabilities for accessing uh, data and services. So the problem of sustainability and governance uh, is uh, progressively in USC, uh, evolving into the problem of sustaining the central aggregation point of EUSC but as well as um, also sustaining the community or regional registries that are being developed by the cluster projects or by national projects. And I think in the other follow-on presentations, we will hear more about this, um, these uh, instruments. First of all, um, now that we're reaching the end of the project, we have been uh, discussing how the um, uh, operations of the service can be continued in the future. So from a service provisioning point of view, we have identified who is the provider, which is in EOSCAB, the EGI Federation. We are responsible for the daily running of the service. 
uh, we will structure this for a service level agreement that defines the contractual obligations that the provider, the EGI Federation, will have to honor in terms of uh, support channels, um, availability, and the performance values that we want to deliver, but also um, escalation in case of uh, malfunctioning or security incidents. So the service level agreement provides um, ISO compliant, uh, compliant framework that defines all the obligations and the expected uh, performance of the service. Software is a major component uh, of this platform, which is in fact developed by different uh, consortia and partners. Um, what we are uh, aiming at is to have uh, open, open source uh, code, of course, but also the ability to reuse these uh, code for anyone that will be interested in running the platform, uh, so that there is no lock-in uh, by design. And in terms of branding, we have already adopted the USC brand back in, uh, I think it was uh, 2018, when the portal was launched. Um, so from uh, the very inception, uh, we have decided with the support of the European Commission to, to brand this as a EOSC product rather than a EOSC hub project uh, uh, delivery. For the continuity, of course, we needed to sustain the development. There is a lot of new effort coming in a future project that will also bring new uh, data infrastructures. And we will look at the problem of how data discovery and access in a federated manner can be better served by the portal. This is one of the key objectives for the future. And the, in terms of the ownership of the service, we expect uh, that um, this component will be sustained as part of the business model of the EOSC um, uh, legal entity, the AESBL, that was uh, created in the summer. Moving to a different example, um, we started from the portal, which is an online platform with software development supporting it. We are moving to the service management system, which is a different uh, kind of care, which gives you, I hope, um, uh, another example of how sustainability can be, can be pursued. The service management system, for those of you who are familiar with the service management, is a typically a combination of policies, processes, procedures, and roles, which are set up by an organization that wants to deliver services in a professional, documented, and repeatable manner. We have very good uh, best practices, like the well-known ITIL uh, best practices, but also industry standards like ISO 20000, which regulate all of these. In the project, we have modeled the service management system for the federating core of, uh, of EOSC and the concrete outputs, the key exploitable results in this case are not software, no services, but actually processes and policies. For this specific uh, uh, kind of output, we have, first of all, in terms of governance, identified what is the intellectual property and who is the owner. Typically, this is a foreground in a project, meaning that different organizations and people contribute with their input and intellectual um, input to, to these uh, outputs. Uh, so we are defining the owners of this intellectual property and uh, defining the access rights. Our current uh, default policy in the project is Creative Commons with attribution. Um, and this is very likely the licensing that we will apply to these policies and procedures so that follow on projects can take this output and further evolve it by providing credits to the originating project. In terms of sustainability, of course, this we expect will be continued and also being an integral part of the core gradually uh, sustained by the EOSK SBL. I will move into the final example, which is the portfolio. And um, I like, first of all, to, to say a word about the EOSC exchange. The exchange is uh, where the rich uh, portfolio of data and services and research outputs comes together to support scientific processes. And in the project, we delivered the two kinds of uh, capabilities, horizontal services, which include the data discovery and access, federated computing, processing and orchestration, data and uh, metadata management, data preservation and sensitive data service management. These are horizontal capabilities, which can be exploited by different disciplines. 
and then a number of uh, thematic uh, uh, services which deliver uh, data and specific tools which are very tailored to the needs of the user communities and we have a portfolio of these. So in terms of uh, sustainability and now focusing on these uh, thematic services which are where we expect the demand will grow in ESC, um, we have identified uh, two areas. One is the technical integration. Technical integration was a way to um, enhance the capabilities of these services by bringing together horizontal services and thematic services together. This is a technical development uh, effort that we had pursued in the first two years of the project. And we expect we'll continue the depending on, uh, on the community and the thematic service through bilateral agreements, according to the business model and the interests of the providers and the thematic uh, service providers. So this essentially will be governed independently according to the success of the output of the project by every single collaboration. In terms of access policies, we expect that this uh, will bring uh, and build the service portfolio and uh, in uh, also trying to be aligned as much as possible with the outputs of the working group on sustainability of ESC. Uh, we have agreed that every thematic service can decide to stay in the portfolio and in the portal where the access policies will be totally governed and owned by the service provider according to their own business model and this is how uh, we can uh, build the European Open Science Cloud in a way which is inclusive and uh, also flexible so that the different access policies and business models can be supported according to the needs of the specific providers. So um, to conclude, and this is my last slide, um, the lessons learned in the project is that the different key exploitable results depending on their nature, the, can have different uh, strategies in terms of governance and sustainability. And this is uh, intrinsic in how EOSC is being implemented with a core, which is the enabling a set of services and specific capabilities that will remain uh, fully managed and governed by their own uh, specific providers. Uh, proper licensing is, is very important for the foreground, meaning what is being produced in the project and delivered to follow on projects. Um, licensing should be uh, flexible to allow uh, exploitation by third parties uh, to make sure that these results can be um, exploitable, exploited in the most effective manner. So the licensing is a very important decision in the, uh, in the project. Intellectual property has to be recognized and ownership, uh, typically it's a co-ownership, so different organizations own a given IP, has to be organized and documented so that uh, the owners of the results can be also acknowledged in the licenses. And regarding branding, the choice of EOS card is to use the EOSC brand according to the guidelines that were being given by the executive board for all the candidate components of the EOSC core which we expect will be uh, sustained by the EOSC legal entity. And for every other result, the owners will retain their own brand and of course their own control in terms of access policies and delivery. So with this uh, last uh, slide, uh, this is the end of my presentation. I want to thank you for your um, attention. And uh, of course, I'm here for any question. I will look in, at the chat window in a moment. Thank you. Thank you, Tiziana, for this uh, very informative presentation. And um, is there any burning question from the audience? At the moment, I don't see any in the chat. Seems quiet. Uh, in this case, then I would say I would suggest to move forward with the next presenter so that we have we can combine all the questions of the QA at the end. So our next presenter is uh, Simon Lambert, uh, who is a project manager and a researcher in data science and technology group in the science computing department at the Science and Technology Facilities Council in the UK. His main role at the moment is the project coordinator of the Freya. And, uh, uh, and in this context, the project has developing persistent identifiers into core components of the European and global infrastructures. 
He's also active in digital data preservation and scientific data management. And uh, I give the word yes. now to Simon to give the presentation. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Sergio. Um, the introduction. Yes, uh, I'm going to be speaking about uh, the uh, outputs of, of, of Freya uh, and sustainability issues. So. Uh, just to share my screen. <clears throat> Good. So um, the Freya project, as I'm as I'm sure everyone knows, is uh, concerned with the uh, infrastructure for persistent identifiers, both globally and as part of the European Open Science Cloud. Um, like uh, EOS Hub, Freya is now coming to an end after three years of work, um, and so I'm going to first of all present uh, this graphic uh, which summarizes the key exploitable results of Freya uh, related to the, the the three pillars of Freya the PID graph the PID forum and the and the PID commons um, I should say that the one of the first things you you probably notice about this graph is the is the DOI badges um, associated with some of the outputs here um, so the, I mean, when we think of results of, of uh, projects like this, uh, we think of, of outputs which have have or could have an impact. Um, so the the DOI badge in this in this case is uh, referring to a document which which represents the output, but that doesn't mean that the document is all there is. Um, I mean, the point is that the work that was done uh, and is written up in that document and then taken forward in various ways. Um, is the output itself the document is i could suppose we could say a manifestation of it it's where you would go to find the find the description of it um so that's the significance of the of the doi badges um so the the three pillars of of, of freya the the pid graph at, at the top was our motivating vision from the from the very beginning um, of connecting a rich network of persistent identifiers um, through through metadata uh, through uh, enhancing the number of types of identifier available uh, so as to provide a, a basis for value-added applications in in many different domains um, so there are important outputs there uh, for building general pid graphs there's the the graph ql interface um, there's uh, there's the um, uh, the uh, common DOI search that has recently been been launched uh, by DataSite. Um, then there's the uh, the PID Services Registry, uh, PIDServices.org, um, which uh, I mean this raises an interesting question about the relationship between global infrastructure and and EOSC infrastructure. Um, as as we've heard, there are uh, there are there's a marketplace in EOS, of course, and you can search for services um, within that. So uh, what's the relationship with the, the PID services registry? Um, well, we, we, we know from the, the Tiziana's previous presentation that, um, in fact, you can have multiple um, uh, registries, search portals. Uh, they may be regional. They may be thematic. Um, so this is another of those which is specifically devoted to persistent identifier services. Um, uh, which uh, will often, uh, if not always, appear too in the in the general EOSC marketplace. Um, uh, we uh, have provenance services. Uh, we have um, the the um, some development of uh, notebooks, Jupyter notebooks, which illustrate in a very graphic and compelling way the uses of the PID graph. Uh, so these are aimed at communities uh, who are. Um, uh, with a, with a view to um, encouraging uptake of the of the PID graph through providing these rather uh, dynamic and and uh, compelling illustrations of the use of the graph, uh, we have our own pilot applications developed within the project, uh, which are going to be taken forward within their own domains, uh, and uh, in some cases are, uh, are already uh, available as services through the the general EOSC portal. Um, so these are the the PID graph outputs which are uh, available to the to the community now uh, available for use or for reference. Um, regarding the the PID forum, um, 
of course, there is a very specific uh, website, uh, a community website called pidforum.org, um, uh, which uh, this, this, the future of that is, is now secured beyond the, beyond the Freya project. That will be continuing as a focus for community engagement around persistent identifiers. Um, but the, the word pidforum in, in, in Freya has a more general meaning than that. That is the most specific manifestation of it um, but the PID forum refers to, to anything which in, engages the uh, the community uh, around the subject of persistent identifiers uh, so there's been our work with the uh, with the RDA uh, and the launch of the uh, a, uh, an interest group on the open science graph for fair data um, there's training materials uh, and then there's the work that we did uh, on new persistent identifier types, starting with landscape assessment uh, and, and then advancing some of those persistent identifier types uh, and embedding them in our own pilot applications. Um, regarding the, the PID Commons, uh, which is concerned with sustainability of the persistent identifier infrastructure, um, we had a session yesterday, some of you may, may have attended it, uh, uh, on the possibility of a, a so-called PID Federation or PID Alliance, as we prefer to call it now, um, as a, a very inclusive forum uh, for global stakeholders in persistent identifiers. Uh, and there is a, um, a, a plan to take that forward again beyond the end of the Freya project. Um, We've been doing work uh, uh, contributing through Freya to EOSC persistent identifier policy, uh, which is a, another very relevant output for, for EOSC, um, and work on integrating the PID graph into the EOSC uh, through specifying how the PID graph outputs could be, um, could be uh, related to the uh, EOSC marketplace uh, core that Tiziana was telling us about earlier. Um, so what, what are the general plans and what are some of the, the, the challenges that we, we face? Um, so the, uh, yes, I've, I've mentioned the, the PID Federation or, or PID Alliance. Um, there's a question of, of how that relates to the PID Commons, which is the sustainability output of, of Freya. Certainly the uh, PID Alliance will be a, a central part of that, but it's not all of that. Uh, the Commons has other um, concerns. Um, PID Federation as a stakeholder community is certainly concerned to some degree with sustainability, but also with many other things, including uh, inclusiveness and representation, as I've mentioned. Uh, so there are some sustainability issues um, that, that, that won't really be the concern of any such uh, uh, PID alliance, um, uh, but we should feature in the PID commons and therefore we're making sure that those are, are covered by appropriate um, appropriate stakeholders uh, such as the, the RDA or EOSC itself. Um, there's the uh, injection of, of the PID graph into EOSC thinking and implementation. Um, there is a, a, a certain tension possibly between um, the PID infrastructure, which of course has existed for a long time as a, as a global infrastructure, uh, and the the focus of the EOSC uh, for, provi for providing services for European researchers, uh, how do those two how do those two match up? Um, uh, I'm pleased to say that I mean certainly PID graph thinking, the vision of the PID graph uh, has been uh, um, captured by the, the EOSC, for example, the Strategic Research and Innovation Agenda, the latest version uh, under its implementation challenges makes reference to uh, enabling the, the PID graph uh, as one of the, the future directions of work. Um, the PID forum itself is, is very definitely going to continue uh, as, a, as a global stakeholder forum for discussions of persistent identifier related affairs. Uh, we had a session earlier during this conference uh, about the PID forum. Um, and then, of course, the, the Freya partners uh, ourselves are going to be uh, exploiting the enhanced uh, services and applications that were developed through the project, um, whether they were the pilot applications for specific disciplines like uh, facilities science in the case of my own organization, STFC um, or um, CERN, British Library and, and others uh, have all been enhancing um, our, our applications through the PID graph. Um, uh, and then the, uh, the the PID service provider partners, uh, uh, DataSite, uh, Crossref, Orchid, uh, uh, will be 
uh, offering the enhancements uh, that have been developed uh, through their own services uh, and making them available um, uh, for, for users and, and developers. Um, one, one thing that we, we found um, a useful way of thinking about these things uh, at an earlier stage of the, of the project is to think in terms of assets, resources and, and, and services. Um, this actually originated from the EOSC pilot glossary uh, of, the, of the EOSC, which was uh, a couple of years ago and in fact was a, a rather um, highly developed uh, attempt. It was, it was more than a glossary really, it was almost an, an ontology uh, of, um, of EOSC components. Um, so uh, based on that, we, we, we took a view of asset, resource and service, where an asset is, is something of value to whoever holds it. Um, a resource is an asset that is consciously made available uh, outside. Uh, and a service is a resource that is offered in a service-like way. So that's a slightly circular definition, but I think we all know what it means. You know, there's, it's, there, are, there are standards of service, it, there's, there's maintenance, it's, um, uh, there may be payment involved, although not necessarily. Uh, so an example of a resource which is, is not a service could, for example, be the, the, the uh, outcome of the work on the PID policy. Um, I mean, that's definitely a resource that Freya has, has contributed to for the EOS community, but it's, it's not a service. Um, we found that uh, a useful way of, of thinking about uh, the categorization of the outputs of Freya. Um, so in fact, well, with that summary, um, I think that's, that's uh, all I have to say at the moment. Um, but yeah, happy to take questions and thank you for your, your attention. Thank you, Simon. Um, do we have any questions? Hi, can I perhaps ask one live? Yes, sure. Yes. Um, so, uh, Simon, just what you now mentioned, you know, the difference between assets, resources and services. Did this help you also in thinking about the sustainability because you would, um, you would have different paths for each of these uh, elements? Uh, yes, indeed. Um, yes, I mean, the... Um... The, 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 the additional requirements at, at each level of the, of the hierarchy um, certainly uh, imply different needs for, for sustainability. Um, uh, I mean, it's not, uh, it's not a very fine-grained classification, obviously, uh, and its primary use uh, for us was to, was to um, think about the nature of the, uh, of the of the key exploitable results of, of Freya and to understand um, uh, whether they are being made available in, in what way, uh, whether they are services and in what sense. But yes, I think there are implications for um, how you could understand the sustainability paths of those things. Thank you. Uh, Simon, we also got a question on the chat. So the question is about the PID federation, if this will include other types of PIDs other than DOIs. Uh, yes, uh, very much so. I mean, the, the, the federation is, is, um, is not uh, intended to focus on a, uh, a, a particular kind of, of, of PID. It's, it is um, uh, an in, intended to be an inclusive forum for uh, discussion uh, uh, between uh, all stakeholders, uh, including users, certainly not just uh, PID providers um, of, the, of the, the universe of, of, of PIDs. So yeah, the answer is yes, not just DOIs. Okay. Yeah, also there was an additional reflection that uh, as a reminder, the research production preservation infrastructures at a global level, do not use PIDs, DOIs only. So that was the... And then uh, uh, there's a follow-up question, what is about the interoperability between PIDs in this case, as there will be different approaches? Uh, sorry, is this is this question in the, in the chat? Uh, 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 is it in the QA? Uh, uh, oh. In the QA panel. Oh, oh yeah, I've got it. Yeah. I've got it. Yes. Um, um, yeah. Well, I mean, I think. Uh, yes, I think. Um, 
I, I don't want to, to, to enter a, a, a detailed discussion about interoperability at this point, but yes, I mean, interoperability is key for the for the PID graph um, and the, the applications that we've developed in the PID graph show interoperability of different PID types. Um, I mean, it may be that DOIs are, are most prominent by the nature of the um, of the partnership of the Freya project, but there are other PID types as well. Uh, so yeah, interoperability we recognize is absolutely key. Okay, thank you. And uh, then uh, I would suggest to move to the next uh, presentation. And uh, last for the this introductory part to warm up the discussion for the panel. And the next speaker is uh, Francisca de Jong uh, from the Shock Project. Uh, she's the executive director of Clarin Eric and uh, that is the European Research Infrastructure for Language Resources. And she has a background in linguistics and natural language processing. She's also full professor of e-research for the humanities at the Utrecht University and a member of the EOSC Working Group on Sustainability and member of the EOSC, uh, of the, you know, the executive board of the ERIC Forum. And Francisco will provide a presentation, similar presentation to the others with, in the sense of uh, key export results and challenges on sustainability and governance, but in the domain of the shock project. Francisca, uh, you are still muted. You just need to unmute and... Yeah. Yes, we can hear. I hope it works. Yeah, it works. Yeah, okay. Hi, good morning. Uh, thanks for the invitation to, to be in this panel. Um, uh, I represent the project SHOCK, uh, which is the disciplinary, the representative of the disciplinary perspective of, uh, of the program of this week. Um, so I will try to underline the um, relationship with, with disciplinary work that's taking place in the, in the, in the realization of, of the EOSC. So, uh, it's the it's the place where um, the development takes place uh, towards better um, services for specific communities, thematic services as they're often called. Uh, it's it's uh, supposed to be the input for what um, what is called uh, EOSC exchange, as explained by uh, Tiziana. Um, and um, yeah, of course, as a as a as a project, we have several objectives uh, towards uh, contributing to EOSC, but uh, we, we take that objective as a, uh, as a challenge uh, that first of all requires that we organize our own cloud. So here you have a, um, an overview slide of the project shock, which is, um, uh, you can dive into it if you like it, but what I would like to underline is that shock is a consortium of uh, a number of uh, research infrastructures in the uh, domain of social sciences and humanities. Um, this is a, a, a very, um, the social sciences and humanities represent a, a huge number of, uh, of research researchers. The potential uh, audience for what we are doing is as big as um, half a million uh, or more, half a million researchers, professional researchers, or more. Estimates uh, differ a little bit. So there's there's really a lot, a lot to be done to make sure that whatever is being developed addresses the needs of these people, and therefore the the focus on uh, the disciplines in in that domain and the requirements, the disciplinary requirements are um, an important driver for the work in shock. Um, you see a summary of the objectives below. They're a bit uh, of the kind of boring text, so um, uh, I'm not, not going to explain them, but I would like to point again to number three. Uh, one of the objectives is to interconnect existing and, and new infrastructures. So um, we, we are working on the cloud for SSH with the aim to be able to um, integrate it also in, uh, in the EOSC ecosystem. Um, for uh, the SSH uh, parties involved, 
this means a transition from what could be disciplinary silos, which sounds a bit negative, but it's uh, to underline the fact that there is a real challenge um, and separate infrastructures into uh, an, uh, an infrastructure that is suited for the needs of uh, SSH researchers uh, and at the same time to work uh, on uh, uh, a cloud that is uh, aligned with the uh, specifications of the European Open Science Cloud. Here you see this concept of um, um, clouds of clouds uh, uh, illustrated. Um, EOS is a cloud, um, uh, but there are several clouds in EOS, especially if you, if you focus on the thematic services, the biomedical domain has their, uh, is working on their own um, uh, cloud that can be aligned with EOS, the environmental research infrastructure is doing the same, the physical infrastructure, uh, the, the infrastructures for physical sciences, etc. And then here we have shock, which is uh, again a combination of clouds, namely uh, what could be called the humanities cloud or what could be called the social sciences cloud. Um, but we are trying to not focus too much on, on the differences between those two, but to work towards a harmonized uh, service offer for the uh, SSH communities at large, based on things that are already existing. Um, so here you see, uh, uh, um, again, this objective summarized in the first bullet, uh, namely to work towards common uh, data and service protocols uh, that will serve the interoperability of data and services uh, uh, for the SSH domain. Uh, but of course, it's also nice to look a little bit into what is then cluster specific for the data um, sets and the services in that uh, large domain. Um, well, you've, you've, if you've attended uh, other uh, parts of the program of, of this week's event, then um, uh, the high level summary here will not surprise you. So we we focus on cultural heritage content in all kinds of formats. We focus on language resources with the, with the huge diversity of languages in, uh, um, in the various sub-disciplines of, of the humanities and social sciences that cannot uh, just use English as is possibly the case in many of the other domains. A specific feature of, of shock is that it is multilingual um, uh, by nature. Uh, uh, it's focusing on survey data and also uh, on, um, uh, there are also several other types of objects that could be listed here. But the importance is um, that you, the message that you can take from this overview is that it's very diverse. Um, um, well, we, we were supposed to ask a little bit about the key exploitable results. Um, uh, I, I would like to mention here only two, because Suzanne Dumouchel will dive into um, the SSH open marketplace, which is uh, the most visible, will be the most visible outcome of the shock project. It's the um, place where the tools and, and services are uh, offered in open access. And at the same time, we pay a lot of attention uh, to develop an, um, a common platform for training and, and uh, training materials and for developing a cross-disciplinary trainer network. Um, these two are the most visible uh, exploitable results that are envisaged in shock. Uh, and of course, behind that uh, are a lot of individual uh, services for all kinds of issues. So behind, for example, the open marketplaces uh, were going on to support uh, service interoperability or to protect sensitive data, for example, interview recordings, or to harmonize the various vocabulary platforms, very important for the multilingual enterprise that we are, um, or the undertaking that we are, support for um, multilinguality in, uh, in the survey platforms, uh, tools for matching data uh, and, and um, analytic tools, etc. But uh, the marketplace will be discussed in more detail uh, by uh, by Suzanne, so I leave it at this. Um, and now go over to the, the governance and sustainability issues that, that come with this ambition to work together as a cluster. Um, diversity is, is an issue in at the level of EOSC, but it's of course also a level uh, 
uh, an issue at the level of all the intermediate clouds, including uh, uh, the shock cloud, because there are many um, different research communities and disciplinary practices. So the challenges um, are um, to integrate for the governance and sustainability uh, challenge. The, uh, the issue is to harmonize the various levels at, at which you have to govern and sustain the results. Uh, this, this, is, this may pertain to the central level, it may pertain to the level of national nodes in the uh, individual research infrastructure, especially uh, in the ones that have uh, an ERIC-like structure, because there you have uh, the countries that uh, uh, are providing the, the basic funding for um, for the for the organizations and of course there is the uh, uh, challenge to govern and sustain the results at the level of e, uh, EU projects um, and then you have to also manage the diversity within the communities and and to and you have the need to align strategies at a disciplinary level at national level and at the level of collaboration in clusters which I think um, to focus on the latter is a good thing because there's a lot to learn from the clusters um, that exist in the context of, uh, of S3 and EOSC. Um, this, this message that the clusters play a very important role is um, well understood uh, by now by the people um, designing uh, the governing structure for EOSC. Uh, I have two slides here with quotes from um, the document that was known previously known as uh, as the Iron Lady, which is now called the Fair Lady, um, you see their text that uh, explain that uh, um, the Federation of of um, uh, Services uh, in, uh, in in EOSC has to take place via uh, the, the um, uh, Federation of the Thematic uh, Clustering. So the importance of um, of cluster infrastructures and, uh, infra and and thematic clouds is 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 well understood as a uh, as a key for a success of EOSC uh, definitely in the first stages. Here's another slide with uh, with some intriguing text. Um, so the uh, it says here that the onboarding of services should start with the thematic services because they represent high quality resources valued by research community. So the importance of the uh, uh, connection with cultures uh, of research within the various communities is uh, again uh, understood. Uh, and I think very important message in that report is also that um, um, uh, the, the best practices uh, are not being developed at uh, yeah, for uh, the, the Federation in uh, EOSC and uh, the support for research is, is, is not developed at some abstract level, but is actually uh, something that is fueled by um, grassroots initiatives that have led to <coughs> um, well designed uh, uh, cluster clouds. So here is, uh, this is a message for the shock community and, and for the parties that work together with with cluster clouds um, that uh, uh, the quality in terms of server deliver service delivery for the researchers is partly coming from the domain specific uh, needs or and the, and the uh, degree to which which they are served um, this is my last slide this is uh, a few of the uh, comments and, and ideas uh, that have been developed within shock on how we would like to uh, work on the governance and sustainability for after the project in the coming year. As you know, uh, shock is almost halfway uh, its project duration. So typically this is the kind of thing that you work on uh, as you have a better understanding of uh, how the uh, non-technical object or the technical objectives and the uh, development objectives and, and the requirements objectives have been um, uh, have worked out. So um, a, a, a few important notes are that a, a very important reason for working on governance as in the sustainability is that it helps uh, to uh, increase the visibility uh, of uh, of the cluster, and especially for 
the SSH, this is important because first of all, we are big, but also we have an inherent long tail uh, because of the diversity. And uh, so it, it's good to make sure that you uh, have good visibility rather than are being uh, perceived as a fragmented uh, community. So uh, one instrument to, to make that happen is to make sure that there is proper branding of the services you bring about, um, uh, that you make sure that you benefit from the sustainability strategies of uh, individual research infrastructures. It's always a, a fallback option for a service sustainability, but it can also serve other purposes. Um, it's important to uh, collaborate with the other clusters. They also have to develop their models for uh, sustainability and governance and definitely um, uh, some alignment there could be beneficial for all. Um, it remains important to stay in touch with, uh, uh, with the various communities. So the challenge is to balance cluster level development uh, and integration with, with community driven creation. Um, and then of course the question is how can this be done uh, in concrete manners? And as at many places, a discussion is now going on about whether a common organization would be a good thing um, to enable to the continued work on common objectives. Um, this, this ends with a, with a question mark because which type of common organization model would be suited uh, is, is still being investigated. But uh, this discussion in this panel might uh, fuel that debate as I'm very much looking forward to your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Francisco. Um, do we have any burning question? Uh, I don't see a question. Tiziana speaking. If you okay, can ask a question to Francisca. So you've mentioned that this um, joint conversation with other clusters on how results can be sustained. Um, is there any initial thinking about it already, or is it really early stage? It's well, it, it's early stage. Uh, the good, the good news is that, um, or it's not even news. Uh, the old news is that uh, uh, all the cluster projects. Um, have responded to the same uh, call, as you know, uh, and they all have a task uh, to align with the other clusters. So it is uh, built into the um, uh, the program that is funding the type of projects uh, of which shock is one. Um, and um, yeah, this is, uh, as far as I uh, oversee the dynamics, this is uh, uh, will start happening soon. Mm -hmm. And I have a second a short question. You've uh, mentioned branding. Is the Shaka project going to deliver results that would be owned by the EOSC Legal Association or will be Sorry, by the EOSC Legal Association? Ah, um, well, I think it's, it's too early to, to say that. Um, we have decided that we um, we'll start um, our uh, sustainability plans by working on, on uh, the sustainability of our own services. And, 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 and the, one of those key uh, exploitable results is the marketplace. So we will need to think hard uh, about how to um, make sure that, that uh, this service offer is well sustained and governed. Uh, but of course we will, um, uh, wait for further developments at the uh, and, and, and dynamics at the level of the EOSC association to see what is the right moment to hand over any rights, if at all, uh, if that's needed at all, uh, to uh, to the to the EOSC. Um, maybe that would require again a distinction between uh, generic functionality and and more. Um, cluster specific functionality, not sure. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure if, if the thematic services are supposed to be owned by EOSC, but maybe you have uh, information or insights uh, that could help us. Thank you, Francisca. Okay, 
Um, I would suggest now to move to the panel discussion so we can go more in depth to these topics. And we have around 35, 33 minutes until the end of the session. In this case, I will uh, hand over the moderation to Irena, who will introduce the panel and will uh, moderate it. Yes. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, so the, this were really great introduction um, given by yeah, some, some of our colleagues and, and main players. And I uh, also to say that I'm really glad that we have uh, um, quite many people in the audience. Uh, so it, it seems that this is an interesting topic to several of us. Um, so yeah, well, let's let's uh, hear um, about the discussion as well. So in this discussion, uh, we'll have uh, three colleagues that uh, were having this first presentation, but uh, it will be also joined by uh, Lydia Borel uh, Damian from EOSC Sustainability Working Group and Suzanne uh, de Michel, um, that is uh, also part of Shock, and um, but will um, kind of represent the, the standpoint for the marketplace sustainability in these regards. Uh, so we prepared uh, some questions uh, for the group and I, I propose uh, we just uh, tackle them and see if there was something else uh, coming in in the chat and uh, we'll see how to address that. So the, the first table, uh, question is, uh, there are different levels of sustainability or governance from operational to strategic. How can we uh, ensure coherence among the different levels and make those levels interact efficiently? Um, I don't know who would like to go first. Um, perhaps uh, Tiziana, I can ask you from the, from the EOSC perspective, uh, so for the EOS Cup. Um. Mm -hmm. um, it's a complex question <laughs> to answer. Um, so in the EOS Cup uh, project, we, we have um, paid attention to the ownership of the services and uh, other intellectual, intellectual properties. Um, and how we think uh, this would relate to the future governance of the European Open Science Cloud. Uh, so for services which um, we, for, for example, for services where there is um, depletable resources and um, need for sustained funding, we expect the funding model and the ownership will stay with the original provider. So infrastructures uh, like KGI, and I think I can speak for you that as well, we retain the ownership of the services of the horizontal one. And the, similarly, the thematic services. So the first um, uh, approach uh, has been to define in the longer term who would retain ownership of a service or an asset. And the sustainability path has been uh, defined according to that principle. We have been working under the assumption that uh, part of the EOSC uh, services will be sustained by the legal association that has been created. Um, and this is why for the key exploitable results that I presented, like the, the, the marketplace, the portal, the service management system, we expect these core elements to be intrinsic and necessary for the existence of EOSC. So they will have inevitably, they will need uh, funding from the EOSC association or participating members. Um, what remains to be addressed and uh, perhaps Lydia has uh, also input on this uh, because of the sustainability working group has been looking into this is uh, what is specific to USC that really is complementary to the existing business models of the participating infrastructures. Um, here I'd like to mention a paper that we, uh, with the clusters and the infrastructures have recently published in September on what we feel is the mission and responsibility of the European Open Science Cloud. The clusters emphasize the importance of sustaining the reuse of data and other research objects 
as for many projects, uh, there is no mandate nor funding to ensure that data and uh, services and objects can be made available to anyone free at point of use. So if we want to really ensure an effective reuse of data, we would need an infrastructure and the related costs have to be sustained to make, to make this data reusable beyond the originating community. And this can be a very expensive activity. So we feel that um, this question is still unresolved. It's, uh, if I can bring the point of view of EGI, this is uh, very important to EGI as we are a distributed computing infrastructure. Um, we would like to see how EUSC can contribute to, to sustain the cost of the processing data, which is opened beyond the originating community as we need a way to make it um, structural. And um, we feel this is also in the joint position paper that a transaction-based model uh, or commercial access is not suitable. Uh, most of the funding is in research projects or in national organizations which rece receive long-term funding. And uh, the funding model of EUSC should be as much as possible aligned with, um, uh, with the, the current practice. I hope I addressed the list, at least a few aspects of these. Um, yes, thank you. And you also opened uh, new ones. Uh, um, so what I, what I hear is, um, you know, community-based and, and uh, also going in this direction that community needs to maintain and develop things that they need as for the community. But then we have uh, the main portal and things that will need to be maintained. And this is something that, that, that should be and probably will go into the, the new EOSC um, uh, yeah, uh, team, so to say. Uh, but then it's also, as you said, you know, even if we have things in the community and the things that will be jointly, um, some data files might be really large and maintenance of everything might be, yeah, expensive. So it's, um, it's yeah, uh, several challenges to address, I think. Uh, yeah, perhaps if I can conclude with, uh, with a summary. Um, I think we made uh, good progress in, uh, in shaping the governance of the federating component of EUSC. And this is, um, I think, also thanks to the fact that we have existing examples of distributed infrastructures and how they have been govern governing this. Typically, the federating element of an infrastructure belongs to the coordinating entity to sustain. And I think this is what the latest uh, papers produced by the Sustainability Working Group are also suggesting. However, the fully uh, realized vision of EOSC, there is much more to be um, developed, sustained, and federated beyond this. And um, I believe this will be our next uh, challenge to tackle, how we can ensure that the entire ecosystem of services can be sustained. Yeah, thank you. Can I ask uh, perhaps uh, Lydia to, to respond or give us some, some sure. new clues and which direction to go? Yes, well, uh, indeed, as, as Tiziana said, is a, is a question that uh, it cannot be answered today, but I can only say that I think we are on the way to try and ensure that the different levels go indeed from uh, more operational to strategic uh, act coherently. Uh, first of all, yes, the, the EOSC uh, executive board and in particular the sustainability working group has been dealing with aspects related to um, governance and the legal entity that has was created over summer and that will have its first general assembly on 17th of December will be the main outcome of these, um, of these uh, efforts. The EOSC legal entity will be the counterpart to the European Commission in dealing uh, with the um, governance aspects of the European partnership that will start on normally 1st January 2021. Um, probably some of you are familiar with this uh, 
two years uh, within the governance system uh, about um, the um, uh, members, the full members, uh, and the members that are also mandated by their government. So here is a first point of synergy. Uh, the full members of the association, I think there will be somehow like 160 or 70, if they are all accepted at the General Assembly on 17th uh, December. There, these will be full members, therefore with full um, rights and obligations as established in the statutes. Amongst them, one per country, they can be mandated members. That's what the name is called, mandated members. That means that in certain aspects, they will have the power to make decisions on behalf of their member states. That is the case, uh, for example, in adoption of statutes, if they are ever uh, reformulated, or the bylaws, which are being finalized now, or matters related to high-level uh, strategy, as well as in the election of the members of the EOSC board. So here is the first point of synergy between members and member states. This is a very important point as the um, EOSC Association is an independent, legally based organization, at the same time has to has the, has the right of um, act independently, at the same time is an, an organization that has been built to be, as I said, the counterpart of the European Commission. Another point of uh, synergies for good governance would be the projects that will be funded under the new uh, Horizon Europe uh, program. These projects will have to have a strong link with the governance in not all of them, but in some aspects. Uh, for example, the costs, the cost, uh, uh, cost allocation, uh, the operational costs, etc. Because previous to the generation of the European Partnership, there have been studies uh, on business models, building on existing examples. However, one of the main conclusions is that the existing infrastructures that are similar to EOSC are not service oriented in the way that EOSC has been conceived. So it's difficult for them to allocate costs to specific services. So we have gone as far as we could, but there is more that need to be done and some of these projects will have to include um, an area to identify the costs related to the services that are provided so that's another element of uh, synergy um, and perhaps last but not least the alignment with other initiatives such as uh, gaia x euro hpc blocksberg industry commons or the upcoming eic marketplace to avoid uh, unnecessary duplication in the deployment of EOSC. Maybe I should stop here because I think these are three main elements of synergies in governance. So thank you. Can I uh, perhaps just ask to clarify uh, and what we see is uh, yeah, um, a lot of issues in, in, in current projects. You mentioned that there will need to be uh, costs added to the, let's say, sustainability of a service or tool that would be developed in a certain project. But we also know that these costs actually arise after the end of the project itself. So then the question is whether this will be eligible costs of the project itself or it will uh, the project will just need to also provide a, a business model, so to say, of the sustainability um, of a service that they will um, develop in the project. No, I'm afraid what I meant a different thing. It's not about eligibility and sorry, eligibility of costs is about being able to identify the, the costs as a service. The problem with the projects right now is that they are personal costs, um, uh, direct costs. Uh, you see, they are not service costs. Yeah, and it's, I think here it, it's very important that the landscape consists in part of organizations that have um, a, a lifetime beyond projects. Uh, 
So for example, all the, uh, the ERICs and the uh, uh, other research infrastructures, they, um, they are not, uh, their horizon is not limited by projects. Of course, they, they don't have an eternal lifetime, but they are able to, uh, uh, to play a role in, um, in, this, uh, in this sustainability of services because that's their job anyhow, and they're paid for that. So they have a responsibility as well. Um, um, and therefore I think that there are some prospects of doing that properly. But it's, um, uh, uh, I agree with the underlying element in the question here is that it's about the coherence between uh, the measures for these different levels. And, and that's also uh, part of the reasoning behind um, the approach taken within shock to first sort this out uh, among the shock partners, of course, with an eye on, on what's happened, what is supposed to be happening at EOSC. And we do register services in the EOSC catalog, uh, but these are the ones that we have, um, for which we have secured uh, sustainable funding through uh, the, uh, the budget that we have as an organization, not as a project. Thank you. So perhaps in this direction, can I ask Suzanne uh, to comment on this? How do you see, you know, this relationship between the sustainability of uh, elements that are going to be in the marketplace and then, yeah. Yeah, th thank you, Irina. Uh, yeah, indeed, I think it's quite, uh, it's really interesting to hear that the, the first uh, answer we had for this question are uh, really high level uh, about the sustainability and governance uh, related to the EOSC uh, in general, the EOSC association and uh, the infrastructure. Of course, I completely agree with uh, what uh, Francisca just said about uh, the role of research infrastructure in this, uh, in this perspective. But I'd, I'd like to say, um, however, that uh, in the perspective of the shock, uh, the SSH open marketplace uh, that is uh, currently uh, uh, building uh, into the shock project, um, the, the question can be uh, can be understood quite uh, differently. I mean, there are even at the level of the service, there are different uh, different steps in the governance. Uh, for instance, in the SSH open marketplace. We have, uh, of course, the high level, let's say the strategical level of the governance of the marketplace in itself. Uh, what will be uh, the relation of the marketplace with the other services provided by, uh, by Shock, but also with other external services, with the EOSC catalog and so on. But there is also a macro, a micro, uh, not macro, but micro governance, uh, which is at the level of the curation process what kind of uh, curation process, how to uh, manage this, this type of governance, which is also linked to the sustainability of uh, the source uh, of the tools that are used and, uh, and uh, things like that. And there, are, there is the third level, which is how to engage the community in this global perspective of the governance. And here, um, so what we, what we are currently discussed uh, uh, within the, the uh, the, the team involved in the, the building of the open marketplace is the link between the macro governance, uh, which is uh, only the, the strategical layer of the, the marketplace and the curation, um, curation level. And it's already something very difficult to achieve, uh, especially because it depends a lot of uh, other models of governance and sustainability, especially the ones that are, have been raised by, uh, by Lydia, for instance. So this is uh, another layer, uh, sub one, uh, that has to be considered, but which include uh, as well different kind of, uh, of perspective. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. I think uh, one of the, the elements that we'll tackle in our next questions are also linked to the community, but I would also like to give a, a short word to, to Simon. Uh, you are towards the end of the, the project. Um, how do you see these uh, going forward? I mean, you explain a lot uh, in your presentation, but if there's something to add, perhaps to this discussion. Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, I think uh, Suzanne made some, some very interesting points about the the, the different levels of, of sustainability. Uh, I mean, I think it's important to um, remember what what sustainability is. I mean, the uh, funding and, and, and governance are, are, of course, very necessary for sustainability, but I don't think they are sustainability. Uh, sustainability, is, as I see it, has different, has different facets. Um, um, 
maintainability, the, the ability to keep things running as they are. Um, um, adaptability is the capacity to, to adapt to changing developments, whether on the supply side or the and that would include uh, intended suppliers as well and I think those three facets are what we what we mean by sustainability uh, and therefore the uh, the way to to join up the different levels from strategic to operational is to make sure that the the higher levels do what they can to remove barriers to the lower levels to achieve those um, to achieve those facets of, of sustainability uh, so that the the governance mechanisms the the funding streams should should have that in mind they, they wouldn't be ends in themselves but they would be directed towards achieving those facets of sustainability and the different levels would be working together to um, to make that happen to remove barriers between levels Yes, thank you. I think this is uh, nicely put, you know, all the, the, the facets that we need to look into. Let me perhaps move to our uh, next question, just to figure it out how to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so perhaps, uh, um, uh, Francisca, you already mentioned some of these things, but uh, our next uh, discussion question is, what would the community need to be uh, able to sustain the thematic services. So I think uh, we are now talking about the community uh, perspective here. I think that you pointed out that uh, a lot of the sustainability will be, uh, but let's say by Eric's already, uh, but how to involve the, the community in, in all of these? Um, yeah, well, the Eric's of course are in a communication with the communities they serve. They have communities to serve and they are uh, uh, and, and many of the representatives are um, taking up tasks within the research infrastructures uh, anyhow. Uh, but I think uh, if, if you see, um, uh, I think one of the important needs for, for the community is um, that the services uh, correspond or offer the kind of quality that they expect. Um, and, and if it concerns uh, data, then um, uh, of course the the uh, in in the model of distributed data infrastructures that that I think is most common in the domain of uh, SSH, um, the owners of of, of uh, data repositories have responsibility for um, for for the data quality and for the curation uh, uh, of the metadata, etc. And uh, what, what, what they need in order to be able to do that well is uh, um, support for uh, communication, exchange of best practices, et cetera. In the end, of course, they also need uh, money uh, uh, to be able to maintain uh, the repositories that they, that they created or that they have responsibility for. Um, but if as, as, uh, I think uh, the... Um, uh, quality and interoperability issues demand that there are um, channels for uh, communication and exchange and for training, etc. So I think this is an important element for um, uh, for the sustainability of thematic services from the from the community perspective. Thank you. Um, and and uh, perhaps Lydia, how do you see that from the top level? <laughs> Yes, how, how thank you. Can engage. Well, I think uh, to, to take it from uh, where Francisca uh, left it, I think that indeed training awareness raising among the communities is absolutely important. Uh, there is so much to do at the level of communication. Um, it, I, I, we have been able to communicate with many stakeholders, but still there is a lot out there in the communities. A lot of people who really have a hard time understanding EOSC and understanding uh, the thematic services. So a lot of awareness raising and training is needed. Uh, also, I think that uh, a strengthened uh, pan-European e-infrastructure for EOSC, that is absolute must 
to ensure uh, service to uh, everybody across uh, Europe. Uh, data stewardship and data-driven policy making, that is also uh, important. And the uh, EOSC executive board, especially the rules of procedure, architecture working groups have done a tremendous work on this, but they, this needs to continue. It can't stop where we are now. There's still a lot to be done. Of course, uh, there's uh, national political support needed. I think at European level is no question, we have it, but also at national level, that is very important, especially uh, because there will be possibility for uh, using funds uh, from the European Regional Development Funds for EOSC. And also uh, local support, local political support from the national entities to deliver cross-border services, because that may be we should not take it absolutely for granted. So a lot of political support, a lot of uh, awareness raising is, is needed. Yes, uh, thank you. I agree to all these points. And uh, yes, uh, we, we, we do see that uh, there's still a lot of, uh, as I said, awareness raising that needs to be done because researchers are not so much aware of uh, how they can benefit from, from EOSC, so to say, you know, why EOSC is there. They just see it as another entity at this point. Uh, but I do also think that uh, at the point where uh, clusters will be, um, you know, towards the, the uploading, the marketplaces and many other uh, services that you know it will slowly go in this direction but yes um, we see uh, we see when yeah I, I'm more in a training part and we see that there's a need uh, to do a bit more of uh, this awareness raising and also what you pointed out what I really think is important is a national support um, especially uh, we see these differences uh, in Europe uh, that some countries put uh, a bit more uh, budget in, in the research and the development, others less uh, because of their yeah, um, roadmaps. But I really think that, uh, you know, having all, all these developments and open science uh, uh, on the national roadmaps is really important uh, for, for countries to be visible and, and open in this direction. So thank you. Um, Tiziana, do you perhaps want to add something from, from EGI yes. and EOS Cup? Yeah, I'd like to bring uh, also a complementary perspective. Um, there are a lot of national providers of data so, uh, services that um, have a keen interest in uh, supporting open science, which means uh, being able to broaden the user base, being able to uh, increase the reuse of the data and the services at the international level. However, there is uh, at the moment a clash between the open science policies and the availability of funding to sustain open science. So to give you an example, we have one of the thematic services which is coming from a European uh, member state. They are a national research organization and they are mandated to support the national user communities. Uh, they don't receive any funding to support the reuse of their simulation models and data for users outside of their own country. That's not part of their mission, but there would be a lot of potential for exploitation. So they don't receive money for supporting users beyond their country, for training users beyond their country. So there is at the moment, um, I would like to raise this point, um, a disconnect between the open science policies and the understanding that having open science as a reality also requires a funding, which is a change in the way uh, research is being funded nationally. Um, so in order to make this thematic services sustainable, we also need a shift in how research is being funded nationally to, to make open science uh, possible. Yeah, uh, thank you. This is uh, also a good point, yes, uh, that it shouldn't be only project-based, uh, but it needs to have this uh, sustainable funding, but also funding that would uh, uh, see, uh, let's say, larger picture, not only um, yeah, national, uh, because we, we do see that now with uh, 
it is possible to use a lot of data also internationally, even if you don't know the language so, so much, but uh, especially when you're talking about uh, uh, models and, and softwares, uh, it should be, yes, internationally used. Um, perhaps uh, because we have uh, just another uh, few minutes to, 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 uh, to finish, uh, can I ask, uh, uh, Sergio, if there are some questions from the audience, perhaps? Uh, for the moment, no, there is only one question, um, which was partially answered by Tiziana in the chat. And uh, the question is about, uh, what is, there was a request for clarification on what is the advantage of being an observer within the EOSC association and how they contribute to the overall strategy. So, do we want to answer live or it, it was answered in a chat, I think you said. So the answer from Tisana was that uh, the observer will be able to contribute to the strategy research, to the strategic research innovation agenda to the EOSC, but without voting right. At least this is the understanding from Tiziana. I don't know if there is any other clarification that can be provided. Yes, yeah, so perhaps um, this can be also discussed in the back. So um, just to, to, to uh, wrap up, uh, perhaps let me just uh, um, yeah, uh, quickly, quickly add uh, this last question uh, to the table. Uh, uh, so how can the community be engaged in the content creation and then, um, yeah, um, we also were thinking about uh, what kind of uh, bodies uh, that uh, they are needed uh, in the back that community uh, can can help of. Uh, so we have uh, roughly about five minutes. So I would uh, um, just like to, to hear a, a, a quick view. Uh, Simon, would you like to, to start perhaps? Yes, okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, yeah, I mean, from a, a purely Freya point of view, maybe this, uh, this question doesn't doesn't quite arise because um, a, a, a content creation presumably refers to uh, the thematic uh, research communities uh, <laughs> yeah. rather than the yeah. But uh, I mean, having said that, I mean we can we can think of, of mechanisms. I mean, really, what what you need for all these these questions about about engaging the the, the community is you need you need two things i think one of them is a uh, some kind of general way in which all members of the community if they choose can uh, can engage and make their views known uh, so i'd say that if from freya's point of view the the, the pid forum is a good example of that um, but then on top of that you also need some um some mechanism some process some body which will uh, synthesize those views uh, into into consensus and uh, the, uh, an actionable consensus that can be can be taken forward um, and that's not always quite so clear how to do that because although we speak in terms of a community meaning presumably the aggregate of researchers in a particular field they may well not have um, uh, consonant views uh, on on um, matters of, of, of research infrastructure uh, and how to utilize it. Uh, so there's a need for a, a higher level organization. And I suppose from again, from Freya's point of view, we hope that the, uh, the PID Alliance, the PID Federation will, will have such a role, uh, which can uh, produce a synthesis uh, uh, for further action. So yeah, that's, that's all I'd like to say on that. Thank you. Uh, perhaps Suzanne, how do you see that? Because you know there are different communities being uh, involved in the development of uh, the content of the marketplace, so to say, not only the marketplace, but uh, what do you see as an engagement, perhaps? Yeah. Uh, so the engagement actually can be uh, can be seen at a, a different uh, different level. Uh, of course, uh, it, it can be done very concretely through the curation process uh, and the, the, the harvesting of the source and how to find and determine the source. So it can be here that we can engage uh, with the community. And then there is the other layer, which is uh, linked to the research infrastructure in themselves, uh, how they can uh, the the, the um, 
the service provided by the marketplace can be used and uh, and um, yeah, can uh, contribute to the work done in the research infrastructure and in the different working groups which are part of this, uh, this infrastructure. Uh, I just would like to um, uh, to say before before the yeah to conclude by saying that, that we have really to take care I think of the the multiplication of level of governance and sustainability. Uh, from the very concrete side, when we develop a service, then we so we we discuss that there are a lot of of level until the the OSC association and even the the, uh, the um, fund, funding uh, funding layer. So I think we have a lot a deeply uh, yeah multiplication of of levels, and we have to uh, uh, really to take care and to to work more on this uh, the link between all of them. Thank you. Francesca, any last comments on this? Uh, yeah, I um, I would, it's maybe not directly to this question, but I think that uh, uh, because of the investments in the communities and, uh, and the funding for uh, the communities through all kinds of previous instruments, it's important that the, um, uh, the achievements in, in those realms of, of the EOSC will remain seen as uh, a very valuable uh, element of the landscape and if the funding schemes will change towards the EOSC level um, the, the existing support for uh, for these things should definitely not go lost because then it could easily lead to a waste on previous investments. Uh, that's another reason why I, I would like to emphasize the importance of the clusters also because uh, within the domains the I mean, the real uh, scientific uh, progress and, and breakthroughs and, and innovations uh, are not coming from uh, um, national policies. They come from the grassroots initiatives. So you need to somehow make sure that they are well supported. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Tiziana, perhaps your final conclusion or comments to this? Uh, so I believe uh, that um, the success of USC will be measured to the extent uh, science is uh, supported and uh, we can accelerate uh, the scientific processes. Um, this will be possible if researchers can see in USC also a way to share their own software, their own data and have the credits. Um, so if USC could, um, I think this is already in the plans, but if USC could... Uh, develop with an intrinsic model where uh, um, impact can be measured uh, to the extent that data, software, and other assets research outputs are being shared. Uh, that would make, um, this would be a, a big incentive for the researchers to participate in EOSC and to create the content in the sense that they bring data, software, and other open science uh, objects uh, to, to be shared in EOSC. Yeah, uh, thank you. I think this is also a really important point yeah, that we need to find a way to, to credit uh, all the, the things and results that researchers made, not only the, the publication. So perhaps, Lydia, a final word from, from you? Yes, uh, I'm, I'm, there's been a lot of things having said. I think that for me, I would just like to highlight the following. EOS has gone a long ways. Uh, we need to recognize all the work that's been done. It's been fantastic it's ready to take off. Now we need to put the researchers at the center. We need to be very sure that they understand it, that they find it useful. That is the key to success. Then we need to, do, we need to work for that, but they need to be put at the center. It's not the right time for that. Yeah. Uh, thank you, everyone. We are a bit over the schedule, so um, I, I would like to conclude with that. Yes, as you said, researchers are, should be in the center, and then we are all there to, to support that uh, with, with our other hats, since we are researchers with one, some of us. Uh, yeah, I think uh, really a lot of interesting uh, themes uh, open up and, and, uh, and in this uh, discussion, and I think each of us will go back and, and, and see how we can uh, implement that in our own communities and projects that we are developing. 
so thank, I would like to really thank everyone to, to be available uh, for this uh, discussion and the, and the presentations. Uh, so now we have a, a bit of a break in the program and we start with another session um, at, um, at 11.30, which will cover the researchers that we finished with, with them now. So we, we will do with you know, the research communities. And, and then it's also a kind of a concluding session. So if you do have time to join us for, for, the, for the final conclusions um, uh, towards, uh, yeah, um, I think a meet of the day that will be there. So I would like to thank uh, everyone and uh, wish you good work uh, further down and uh, yeah, and bye. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.